Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using flexibility matrix method. Before analyzing, let us see the beam one time. In this beam, there is a span AB. Also, there is an overhanging span BC. In the span AB, there is a point load 50 kN acting on the center. In the overhanging span BC, there is a uniformly distributed load 20 kN per meter. In the point A, there is a fixed support. In the point B, there is a hinged support. Span AB is 4 meter long. The overhanging span BC is 3 meter long. In this beam, we can easily calculate MB because after the point B, there is overhanging. To find MB, we have to calculate moment about B from the point C. In BC, there is uniformly distributed load 20 kN per meter and length of BC is 3 meter. So, to calculate the moment about to B, we have to multiply the load with the distance and distance by 2. We know that in the case of UDL, we have to multiply the distance and distance by 2 with the load. When we do that, we are getting MB which is equal to minus 90 kN meter. We must note that in case of overhanging, we have to apply the load values always negative. Because of that, we are getting a negative value. In this beam, the number of unknown reactions and moments are 3. They are MA, RA and RB. The available equilibrium equations are 2. They are sigma m is equal to 0 and sigma v is equal to 0. The degree of static indeterminacy is equal to 3 minus 2. We will get 1. Let us release ma. This is our released structure. In the released structure, no need to consider the overhanging span. We have made the released structure. Now let us make the coordinates diagram. In this analysis, there is only one coordinate that is in the point A because we have removed MA. Now let us see the formula to calculate MA. P matrix is equal to delta matrix inverse into delta matrix minus delta L matrix. In this formula, first let us calculate delta L matrix. We know that delta L matrix is the displacement in the coordinate direction. In this analysis, the displacement is the slope. So, we have to find the slope in the coordinate. For that, we have to make conjugate beam using the load. If in the simply supported beam, point load is acting on the center, the formula to calculate the ordinate is WL upon 4. Here W is 50, L is 4. When we apply the values inside the formula, we are getting 50. We know that in the conjugate beam, we have to divide the moment by EI. Let us name the conjugate beam as A dash B dash. Inside the delta L matrix and delta matrix, there will be only one value. Because in this analysis, there is only one coordinate. Now, let us calculate delta L. For that, we have to find the slope in the point A. We know that in the conjugate beam, slope is the shear force. Here, in the conjugate beam, to find the slope in the point A dash, we have to find RA dash. This is symmetrical loading. We can easily calculate RA dash. RA dash will be equal to the total load divided by 2. Here the total load is the area. 
We know the formula for the area of a triangle half into breadth into height. Here breadth is 4, height is 50 upon EI. The area divided by 2 we will get RA dash which is equal to 50 upon EI. Let us apply the value of RA dash for delta L. In this formula, now let us calculate delta matrix. We know that delta matrix is the final displacement. In this analysis, we have calculated one final moment that is MB which is equal to minus 90 kN meter. We have to calculate the slope due to this movement. Now let us apply this movement in the point B. So in the point B the movement will be 90 and in the point A the movement will be 0. Using that we can make this diagram. We know that in the conjugate beam we have to divide the movement by EI. Now we have to find a delta matrix. For that we have to calculate RA dash because our coordinate is in the point A. Now let us see the formula to calculate RA dash. In this kind of triangles, the formula for the reactions in the maximum loading side is WL upon 3. The formula for the reactions in the minimum loading side is WL upon 6. Here RA dash is in the minimum loading side. The formula is WL upon 6. Here W is 90 upon EI. L is 4. Using the formula we are getting RA dash which is equal to 60 upon EI. Let us apply this value for delta matrix. In this formula, we have calculated delta matrix and delta L matrix. Now we are going to calculate delta matrix. Now let's see the size of the delta matrix. For 3 coordinates, it will be 3 by 3. For 2 coordinates, it will be 2 by 2. For 1 coordinate, it will be 1 by 1. In this analysis, there is only one coordinate. So, for one coordinate, the size will be 1 by 1. Inside the matrix, we will have only one value. Now, let us calculate delta. To calculate delta, we have to apply unit movement in the coordinate. When we apply unit movement in the point A, the movement here will be 1 and here it will be 0. Using that we can make this diagram. We know that in the conjugate beam we have to divide the movement by EI. Here we have to calculate RA dash. We have already seen the formula. For the maximum side the reaction formula is WL upon 3. Here W is 1 upon EI. L is 4. When we apply the values inside the formula, we are getting 4 upon 3 EI. Let us apply this value in the delta matrix. In this formula, we have calculated all of the values. Let us apply them. 4 upon 3 EI inverse, we will get 3 EI upon 4. Then let us take EI outside. Let us add these two matrices. After adding, let us take 1 upon EI outside. Then let us eliminate this EI and this EI. After calculations, we are getting MA. In this analysis, we have calculated both of the movements. MP, we have already calculated MA just before calculated. Now we are going to calculate the reactions. We are going to take the whole beam and calculate the reactions. For MA, we got a positive value. So it will be acting in the clockwise direction. MB will be acting in both of the directions. So it will be eliminated. In this case, no need to consider MB. 
when we calculate reactions first i am going to calculate ra for that i am going to take moment about b in this case i am moving towards right hand side clockwise will be positive and anti clockwise will be negative ra is acting towards the point b in the clockwise direction so it will be positive and the distance is 4 so 4 ra the point load 50 kN is acting towards the point B in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative and the distance is 2. So minus 50 into 2. This UDL is acting towards the point B in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive. When the UDL comes, we have to multiply with the distance and distance by 2. This movement is acting in the clockwise direction, so it is positive. Finally, we are getting Ra, which is equal to 0.625 kN. Now, to calculate Rb, let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0. Ra and Rb are acting upwards, so both of them will be positive. The point load 50 kN and UDL 20 kN per meter are acting downwards. So both of them will be negative. We have already calculated RA. Let us apply that. Finally we are getting RB. Now we are going to draw the CFO's diagram. Before drawing the diagram, let us calculate the CFO's values. I am going to start from the point A and move towards the point C. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. Using that, we can calculate the shear force values. Using the values, we can make the shear force diagram. Now let us make the free movement diagram. We don't have to make the free movement diagram in the overhanging span. Only in the span AB we have to make the free movement diagram. For drawing the free movement diagram, we have to assume the span AB as a separate assembly supported beam and calculate the ordinate. In this analysis, we have already calculated the ordinate. Using that, we can make this diagram. Using the end movements, we can make the end movement diagram. Then we have to combine both of the diagrams to get the bending movement diagram. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.